that's the truth. We've never seen so many signs in one place before. Look at these. They're absolutely remarkable and full of so much light and color. Some create that mystic illusion of movement, while others flash specific words. Drawing you in. Everywhere you turn in this museum, you see signs from various decades. So much different than what we see today. Most signs for businesses now are the same sign repeated over and over again because of the need for branding and corporate identity. But in the good old days, that wasn't the case at all. There were a lot more mom and pop shops in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and they wanted a distinct sign to reflect their business. So they went to a sign maker who would create a masterpiece. A lot of these guys were probably a stereotype of artists, as we say. Those of you who have lived here for a while, I'm sure you recognize this. Big Bear originated in Columbus and its signs were made here too. In fact, that's where this one was found. They were cleaning up the yard behind their shop where they, they stored, old, you know, um, stored old signs. They cut down the grass and lo and behold, laying face down in the grass was that Big Bear sign. To restore it, the museum had to find specific ruby red glass for the tubing, which isn't made anymore. But they found it, so here she stands. You'll also find Big Boy, Holiday Inn, and Howard Johnson's. And here's a McDonald's sign from 1963. You may think those traditional golden arches are missing, but they're not. If you look at the sign, the, the arches are there, the, the 15 cents panel is there. This sign originally, those arches came through the sign and they would cover the poles down here at the bottom. It was just too tall to fit into this museum. But this one fits, isn't it fun? It was designed for a shopping center in Anaheim, California named Satellite Shopland. The name may not make much sense today, but it did in 1962. If you remember your history, the Russians launched Sputnik in 1957. That prompted all this new interest in rocket ships, outer space, planets. I call it the Jetsons period. The man who was building the shopping center wanted this specific design, so he at first drew it out on paper. Took his drawing to a couple sign companies and said, what's it going to cost to build this sign? And they just kind of looked at him and shook their heads. This guy's nuts. So he actually built that sign himself in his garage. It's a homemade sign. This one reads Kona Lanes. It was built for a bowling center, also from California. It was made from the Tiki alphabet, which became popular after World War II. The guys came back from the war in the Pacific. They'd, they'd been in those kind of Hawaiian flavored bars and restaurants. They came back to the States after the war. There was this whole advent of the Tiki look. In one part of the museum, you'll find signs just randomly displayed. But this is our favorite part of the place the Main Street section. It gives you a good idea of what these creations once looked like on storefronts and buildings. Before coming here, Dave and I had no idea what all went into a simple sign. And now we know there's so much more than just what we see. Not when people leave here, I've heard them often say, I, I, you know, I'll never look at signs the same way again. Can't you read the sign? And that's definitely the case for us.